phases of uh, burn management. So right now I will be talking about um, uh, mostly emergent, uh, emergent, uh, emergent phase, like an emergency. And it starts with the burn. It starts with the burn and ends when the patient starts to diurese. Uh, the patient starts to diurese. Maybe this way. Diurese begins and they start to pee out the fluids that are being administered to them. Uh, well, before the emergent phase, of course, there is pre-hospital care. So ambulance arrives uh, to the scene, they get the patient, uh, they remove the patient from the scene of where they're burning, they stop the burning, cover with cool, clean, uh, uh, with, uh, the burn they cover with something cool, clean, like a tap, uh, water, a damp a towel. Cooling is within one minute helps minimize depth of the injury. Cool no more than 10 minutes to prevent hypothermia. Uh, so when they arrive, they should put the cool, damp uh, uh, towel, but not to wait more than 10 minutes because it will lead to hypothermia. Um, Airway breathing circulation, check for patency, suit around the nares, singed hair, well, we talked about it, check adequate ventilation, are they breathing okay, SpO2 is not uh, definitive, well, well indicator in these circumstances, elevate the limb above the heart level to prevent edema, so elevate above the, the heart. Uh, leave adherent clothing in place so they would not remove the clothing and treat carbon monoxide poisoning with 100% oxygen. And now we get into the emergent phase. So in emergent uh, phase, that's resuscitated from the burn to 72 hours uh, and end fluid mobilization and diuresis. 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 Resist. Perfect. So, so it is um, aimed at resolving the life-threatening problems. So our airway obstructions, the uh, fluid in the lungs, the uh, what is it, the swelling of the extremities. Uh, and preventing the hypovolemic shock and edema formation. Edema formation will lead to circulatory obstruction of the extremities and necrosis. So uh, hypovolemic shock, increased permeability of blood vessels, leads to increased permeability of the blood vessels. So water, sodium, and albumin move to the interstitial spaces and that's secondary spacing. And then third spacing when the fluid moves because of the albumin. Uh, intravascular uh, volume depletion. Intravascular volume depletion uh, leads to de uh, decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate. Hemolysis occurs in red blood cells from the O2 free radicals. And hemolysis of the blood vessels um, will lead to decreased red blood cells and also uh, the red blood cells will start to clamp together uh, in the blood vessel because uh, there's less volume and more clotting factors floating up floating around together and it will clot the blood vessels in uh, different places and that will really lead to low red blood cell count um, I think at first, if the labs are drawn, at first, when the patient is hypovolemic and they draw the labs, the red blood cells will look as if they are high. Uh, but once the resuscitation begins, uh, it, it, once the resu fluid resuscitation produces its effects, the red blood cells will be low on labs. So thrombosis, increasing hematocrit due to Hemoconcentration. So we have increased chemoconcentration, results for fluid loss. 
Um, after fluid resuscitation, the hematocrit drops. So increased potassium circulation from damaged cells and hemolyzed red blood cells. So due to changes in the osmotic pressure, red blood cells will lyse and the damage that they're flowing out of the blood vessels, they will release potassium and the damaged cells in the tissues will release the intracellular potassium. This will lead to increased potassium in the blood vessels and arrhythmias. And probably decreased blood flow to the kidneys will keep that potassium in the body. So here's a little diagram. So we got uh, intravascular fluid depletion. So this is the blood vessel and nope, this is the blood vessel. This is the blood vessel. This is the blood vessel. And we have um, uh, water is leaving due to the water and sodium and albumin. Water and so sodium and albumin leaving that interstitial into interstitial space and then water follows the sodium and albumin. And actually third spacing, third spacing um, that's blisters and edema um, because there's uh, no albumin in the blood vessels, no albumin in the blood vessels, uh, they will move towards the areas where the protein, where is more protein. Where more protein. For example, if people go and donate blood, and uh, instead of blood, they don't, when they go and donate plasma, um, plasma has albumin, albumin is removed from the body, and people will have swollen ankles or um, knees sometimes. Uh, also, ascites. Uh, the fluid moves towards the gut where the more protein in there than in blood vessels. So also, these people will have uh, blood loss about 50 milliliters per hour. So over uh, 10 hours, even 20 hours, let's go 20 hours one day, um, they will lose somewhere around 1,000 milliliters. And that's like a liter. And imagine if they're not drinking, losing all this stuff. So this is a skin layer skin layer and evaporation of uh, water is occurring and we have our low blood pressure increased heart rate and it lead, is leading to hypovolemic shock oh. okay let's continue so that's all pathophysiology so end of emergent phase is when the capillary membrane is restored uh, permeability is re restored. Uh, interstitial fluid remains in, in the vascular spaces. Diuresis begins and urine has low specific gravity. Um, oh, there's a little diagram over here about our red, uh, when I talked about red blood cells. So <clears throat> when uh, there's low volume and in the blood vessel, this is this is the blood vessel okay so this is the blood vessel the permeability is increased so fluid is leaving the hematic rate will be high and then here uh, we have more fluid our uh, uh, red blood cells start to clamp with those clotting factors and platelets and then some of them break because of the free radicals okay I'll label that if I can label it come on please nope okay free radicals Okay, and increased hemoglobin, hemoglobin urea, which leads to kidney injury. Huh? Oh. Come on, please. 
this. Alright. Okay. Immune system. Immune system during the emergent phase, those 72 hours. So bone marrow depression occurs. For some reason the bone marrow will stop producing uh, properly functioning uh, white blood cells. They are not functioning well. And then uh, decreased levels of circulating immunoglobulins. So increased permeability in the blood vessels. The uh, immunoglobulins will move out of the cell and they're just not there, not functioning. They will be leaking all over. White blood cells uh, function defected by cascade of cytokines. So, um, the inflammatory cytokines will cause the um, Inflammatory cytokines will cause the white blood cells to malfunction. They, they, they are defected. The blood vessels would be, be defected. Actually, on the labs, uh, the blood, uh, white blood count will be from 10,000 to 20,000. Probably bone marrow is trying to produce more white blood cells, but they are malfunctioning. And they are not effective. So clinical manifestations of uh, in emergent phase, there can be paralytic ileus. So those um, uh, the gut is impaired, and everything will move backwards. So it will go up and out. It will seek an exit. So, in order to prevent that, we can place the nasogastric tube. And we'll put it right here. Oh, nasogastric tube. And a little suction from time to time. Good. Shivering causes heat loss. So, our fella is gonna shiver. And this will lead to heat loss and I think the increased metabolism and low calorie during this time uh, increased metabolism plus low calorie will lead to uh, sensation of I mean not only sensation experiencing patient will experience the, the cold and so it's important to keep the temperature in the in their room above 85 Fahrenheit. Um, patient can answer questions before intubation. So yes, before intubation, the patient is able to answer questions, but then uh, preferably two hours after arrival, they can be uh, they should be intubated because uh, those airways. Those airways will be occluded by edema. And it's better done it before uh, where they can use the... Oh boy, I don't have much space to write. It's better to use uh, orotracheal access instead of uh, uh, tracheostomy creating tracheostomy tri tracheostomy all right i'll come back in the next video and continue